one aspect of investment is always, you know, the risk. There's always risk. Correct. And your effort being, you know, to minimize that risk as mm. much as possible. And of course, with, you know, with knowledge of people like you about uh, the business altogether, I'm sure the risk would be a lot less than, you know, somebody that just got into the business and, and doesn't know a lot because it doesn't know what to cover and what not to cover. So um, you, you mentioned something just now about the Muslim uh, banking system. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because I personally, uh, I know generally it's like uh, you, you don't pay interest uh, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Before I say any further and, and you know come to my own conclusion, can you elaborate that? On Good question. Bit? I mean, you see what happens is people are under the assumption that a Muslim bank does not make money. If that's the case, the, the Saudis would not be investing in our bonds and treasury bills like more than anybody else. Yeah. So the idea, the idea, what the Muslim uh, uh, system is, is a value-added kind of lending, like you. Uh, let's say a car is worth eight thousand okay. dollars. So when you buy the car, the car would say it's ten thousand instead of eight thousand. Yeah. Do you follow me? So it's a value added, so that um, it's a value added way of marketing the the product. Yeah. But of course there is interest. Of course it's profitable. And all the Muslim countries have the same system. Yeah. So what you're doing is uh, sometimes the bank would own part of the house. Uh, let's say 20% of the house instead of you giving them an interest. So when you sell the house, they get 20% of the profit. Uh, the profit of the house. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's a give and take. I mean, you, I love numbers. I work for numbers. So you're just shuffling numbers around and calling it something else but just to accommodate. But it's a, it does the same thing. It it's actually money. very profitable. Uh, obviously, like you say, if, if the car is worth $8,000 and you pay $10,000, you pay the $2,000 in profit well, profit is another way of saying interest, right? Yeah, and the so. good thing is with the Muslim uh, way of do, b doing business, your interest is predetermined. Yeah. So you already know How what you will uh, pay. And as a banker, I know what I'm getting uh, yeah. to begin with. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, phenomenon. I mean, it's not like it's something I'm an expert at it. I'm still learning. Yeah. But it's, I looked at it. It's no different than uh, any kind of other lending. The whole idea of you know the concept of no interest is just that's because of religion, right? Because yes. you don't pay. Because the Quran money says money. haram yeah. to borrow, and to uh, uh, interest is haram. Okay. Uh, that's my understanding is that. So, you don't quote me word by word. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not a <laughs> religious guy at all. So I don't. No, um, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no. But um, one thing um, we already covered our basis, basically about from the foundation to the business that you're doing and, and um, the business that you're about to get into or already into. Or mm -hmm. into. Um, is there any uh, future prospects about the business that you, uh, you know, considering in addition to foundations, in addition to uh, building communities? Uh, you say something about, uh, you know, building uh, instead of local grocery stores, actually getting to a high, what do you call it? Oh, that's my thing. stuff. I mean, yeah. I actually now I'm uh, I have uh, uh, two projects yeah. that I'm working in in Atlanta. Th that's the one I was telling you earlier. Okay. Those projects, close to two hundred million dollar projects, that um, is the high rise condominium in Atlanta. One is a six hundred unit condominium. The other one is a four hundred eighty unit apartment complex wow. in uh, in Atlanta. So there are two projects I have, and plus we're I'm looking for land and. Minneapolis to do the same thing to actually bring affordable housing and hopefully the Oromos are uh, be able to qualify for those affordable housing and instead of being a renter now section eight yeah. uh, a lot of people use section eight yeah. section eight has a program uh, and instead of them paying you rent for you they pay mortgages so that's one of the things I'm doing with the with the section eight program yeah. so one of the programs I want to bring to Minneapolis and whatever Oromos are is to to build those high rises or condominiums yeah. where the Oromos can actually start owning it and the government pays uh, your mortgage I mean it's, it's a no-brainer yeah. those are the things I, uh, I was telling you earlier that I'm gonna educate people more about it how it works and uh, uh, basically, my project in Atlanta is gonna uh, is gonna be a groundbreaking in, uh, by November, yeah. but it's sold out already because the government is, is taking most of it. Yeah. So, uh, basically, what I'm telling you is that the same thing could be done in Minneapolis and 
uh, uh, in DC area, whatever we want to, to accommodate our folks. At the same time, Abdi Boro could be the one developing it. I don't have to be the one doing it, but Abdi Boro could be the one actually developing this uh, multifamily housing for Somalis, for Ethiopians, uh, f for low-income housing. It's a great, great business. Nice. Um, one quick thing. Uh, what, what would be your take when it comes to renting and, and, and buying and owning a house? Because there's, um, you know, some people say, no, you'd be better off renting. And personally, I see renting is, is you know, put, putting your money down the drain is the way I look at it. And I could be wrong, because uh, depend on what kind of situation it is for the most part. Mm -hmm. But what's your take when it comes to I'm that? I'm gonna give you a qualified answer. Okay. One, 99% of the time, you're better off buying a house. Okay. Uh, there's no way you can beat that. I mean, really think about it. Not, you know, you have appreciation, you have um, just actually a sense of privacy, sense of having something of your own, yeah. eventually a sense of retirement. The tax advantages is humongous. If you make seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, and if you don't have a house, you're stupid. Literally, you're stupid because the, you like you leave money on the table yeah. to the richest country in the world. Yeah. The, the United States government does not need your money. Follow me to operate. Yeah. So there are advantages the government is giving you that you're not using. So I am. I keep saying everywhere I go. I've, I've talked to you this before several times. Owning a house should be a priority by any or more anywhere so having said that uh does the rent make sense of course i mean if you go to look, look at the, the, the new york market or the san francisco market in some part of los angeles there is no way you can buy a house but let's say you were forced over there because of a job relocation or health some people actually move to california for health reasons because of the air issue whatever so if you move to those areas, of course, uh, you're going to have to rent because how are you going to afford a million dollar mortgage? But there is, I'm sure, apartments for, you know, $2,000 by any standard is expensive, but it beats a, a $9,000 mortgage payment in that million dollar house. So, of course, it, it, it's exceptions uh, to the rule as far as renting. But I tell you, and I'll tell you till I die, buy own a house if you want to be anywhere else. Um, the, the the IRS has passed. There is a code in the IRS that let's say you buy a house for hundred thousand dollars today. Yeah. If you live in it, if you make it your primary home, meaning the main house you live in, yeah. For the last two years, when you sell that house, let's say you sell it for three hundred thousand. Yeah. That house, every money you make is exempt from federal, from state, and from social security taxes. Nice. You follow me? Yeah. So. Think of that. Think of the implication. You're young, you're not married. Or if you're young, you're married. Think of moving every two years. Combined, if you're married, you're exempt up to $500,000 profit every two years. Yeah. If you're single, $250,000. Right now, the market is shaky throughout the country. But imagine, the market is always real estate that will never fail you. But imagine, if you do this every two years, you, what, I don't care if you make $100,000, $150,000 a year, you will make more money with your house by enjoying it, by living in it, by taking tax advantages. On top of that, when you sell it, yeah. you make more money. Yeah. Earlier when I was telling you about tax advantages, I wasn't talking about even this, yeah. the two hundred fifty and the $500,000 exemption. What I was talking about more of when you live in the house, yeah. every interest you pay is deducted from your income. Yeah. Meaning, let's say you make $50,000. Let's say you paid... 20,000 in interest payments on your house. So you actually now are, p are paying taxes on 30,000 versus on 50,000 because you can deduct those taxes away from your income. So you're saying the entire 20% interest that you pay is deductible? 100%. 100%. Is, is in some cases, uh, you know, those are a percentage of the tax bracket that you may be in. Uh, or maybe not true. So there are situations. It doesn't matter what situation you have. Okay. I can live in a, a multi-million dollar house. Yeah. If my interest accumulate to be five hundred thousand, that taxes are those interests that I paid that year is deducted from my taxes. So.